Good afternoon, traders. I want to thank you for taking your time off on a Sunday to be here. So let's start. I want to start today with a question that, that the trader posted earlier in the um, thing. He sent me that question earlier on Facebook and I asked him to actually, can you repose the question again, please, Oz? So those, of the, those traders who just joined us, they can look at it. I will still have to read it for the recording. So the question says, for the recording, those who will be watching the recording, and it says that you're a successful trader and you have a great sense of wave analysis and you predict the market at a very high rate. But besides you, there are other great traders who have similar analysis and have their own style. And when I compare their analysis, what I see, what he sees is a different um, wave count and different style of analysis. And as an amateur, he's, he's very confused. He wants to know, well, which should he choose and which will work? And if I get to your understanding, clear, right? And how can I tell why is this so? So it's easy. I can tell you why that is so. I think I will answer the question because I can tell you why that is so. Most traders that you see claim, most traders you would see out there actually would claim that they are Elliott Wave traders. If they're using any kind of a wave analysis, they will call themselves Elliott Wave traders. Those are people who have studied the Elliott Wave theory. Right? They've read the book, they've understand what the book is. All of you can read it and understand it. So it's in English and you can and then they go into the chart and they start labeling. Some of them have very high skills in labeling, some don't. The majority don't. Even those who lay based on the rules that they use in the Elliott Wave book, it's for Elliott Wave trading. The, 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 the percentage, and I have I've done that because that's where I started. That's the basis of what I do. That's where I started. And what I realize is that people tend to fix the chart. Because some of the rules in Elliott Wave says like a flat has a three, five, three, three, five. I really don't want to start an argument on, 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 on YouTube anywhere about Elliott Wave theory because I don't use it as it is. But I could show you a flat that has a three, three, three. And guess what? You can trade that flat and make money. Right? There isn't a five wave in the C wave and it's a perfect flat and it works well. That's where I differ from Elliott Wave. That is why when I started doing it and I, I encounter, I encounter the problem. I encounter a problem with, with traders, right? Uh, with Elliott Wave traders who are, who are saying, well, you're actually doing different things from what we do. Well, but mine work and yours don't work. So I will stick to mine. You can stick to yours and try to do whatever you're doing. I will stick to what I'm using because it works well for me, right? So... I started, I just came up with this whole thing that I'm a wave trader. I didn't use the full Elliott wave trader. Most people use the full Elliott wave trader. And I wasn't trading view. I am still the top trader in trading view. They removed me, but I'm still a top trader. You can go and check my profile. Nobody's anywhere close to me there in terms of the amount of people who follow me. As well as I haven't been posting charts for more than three months since they banned me. And I'm still a top trader even in that. Amazing, right? Because the charts are working great. That is why. So what I did is I started calling myself a wave trader. And I was, uh, I, I didn't say I was an Elliott wave trader. I used to say I'm a wave theory trader. And I was surprised how many fake wave theory traders came up. They have no idea where that came from because they were supposed to say Elliott wave traders if they were actually learning Elliott wave. But they just wanted to copy my charts and put it out there. And, you know, looks like it's my style, but it has nothing to do with the theory of what I teach. The understanding of the chart, the way we, we teach and the rules we use, they don't have it. If they do, they took my course without, you know, they, they bought my course and they're trying to use it under a different name. That's okay. They, if they're good enough, good, but I doubt it. Because none of my traders who are good enough to do it there are actually teaching anywhere. So if you're buying anything anywhere, it's either one, somebody who just bought my course, have not learned the, the concept so well, or he's just trying to copy, you know, look alike, put it that way. What we do is absolutely different. There are a lot of things we do different from what Elliot has taught. We're not using all the similar, boom. we've even identified a few patterns that Elliot Wave has not identified. I think all of you know the AB squeeze, right? It's a perfect one, it works. Now, a lot of you have sent me snapshots of them where you found them and charts you were doing with, right? That's not a pattern Elliot identified, but that's a, very pat that's a very nice pattern that repeats itself over and over in the chart. Now, nobody says that Elliot finished doing that and then nothing else happens, right? Nobody can make it better. Nobody can do anything better than that. That's not the Bible or the Quran or the Hindu scriptures. It's not a religious something. It's something can get better. You can make it better. You can learn it. You can, you can add to it. And one of the things that I've added to that nobody have done 
because it's, it's absolutely new, is I have found out the method how to isolate and identify what is a single wave. How we would use the chart and identify which part, which part of that chart is going to be a single wave and how to break that single wave into smaller subwaves. And that is very, very objective. That is not subjective. Right now, according to the Elliott Wave Theory and all the Elliott Wavers, it's subjective for them. They can put that wave count anywhere they want, and nobody could argue with them. Let's say you put three Elliott Wavers in the room, and you said, okay, or 20 of them, and you said, okay, can you tell me how many waves is in this chart going up here? Let's say, let's take this piece here going up. From here to here, can you tell me how many waves is from here to here? And you would have a lot of different options. You would have one, one will put one, two, three, four, five. Another one will put one, two, and then he will put one. Then he will put a subwave of one, subwave two, subwave three, subwave four, subwave five for three. Then he's going to put his four, is his pink four. And then he's going to put five. Another one will put one, two, three, and a subwave in five waves up there. They can do it anyhow they want. What, you can put three waves in that if you want. There, there is a specific reason I'm counting five for all of you. Because most cellular waivers are going to find five there. We don't see five waves in there. That is not a motive wave for us. That is where we differ from the rest of the Elliott waivers in the world. They will make five waves where there isn't a five wave structure. And in the longer picture, their analysis is going to fail. Most of them. They will recount and they will restructure and they'll redo everything. It will fail because that's not what the chart is doing. I have seen it many times. I've compared it with many of them. And I've seen when they're counting that five waves, and I'm like, you know, you're not going to get that five wave. And we actually followed it and we watch it and we did it. Right? So most of them are just fixing the chart. I remember one of them arguing over this based on your question. We were looking at this chart here in the daily. I think it's on the daily and the weekly, the monthly. I'll put it on the monthly thing if you want. And the guy's looking at this piece. That argument was in trading view, so you can look at it. He's looking at this piece from here. The hair. And I said, my friend, that is a one, two, three wave structure. Anybody see anything else beside a three wave structure there? Any one of you? If you see anything else beside a three wave structure, give me a yes. None of you, right? One person. So we still we still have one magician in the room who sees something more than a three wave structure, right? Well, it's simple. It's a three wave structure. If you see anything else, stop using, stop drinking that thing you drank this morning, um, Albert. Because it's only three waves in there. If you see three waves, it's three waves, it's nothing else. But the magician, because he was told that impulsive wave has five waves, this is how he labeled it. He labeled one, two, three, four, five. So I asked him what happened to this piece and what happened to that piece and what happened to this piece in here and that piece in there, right? Because this wave, as a corrective structure is not equivalent to that as a per corrective structure. One of the things Elliot taught them, but most of them can't listen to it because they, then they, they cannot fix the chart, is that the corrective structures must have a looks of it. It must have a looks of similarity. You cannot put different corrective structures of different degrees. This is a corrective structure, but it's of a lower degree to be equal just to fix the chart. Then in that case, you could as well do this. You could have labeled this whole structure like this if you want. If, you, if there's no level of how you're going to put the structures in terms of the degrees, you could do anything like this. You could put this as one, two, three, four, five. And that would not only be wrong. Because if that is how you're labeling charts, you've got to stop labeling charts. You've got to, you've got to go back and understand the concepts of wave theory. Right? You really got to go back and learn it because what you're doing is imagine, you remember the whole idea of this is that these waves have different degrees. What you're doing is you're using a very, very small degree with a very, very big degree so that you can create five waves where there is no five wave structure. And they do that very often. 
a lot of them. Most of them, I'm not talking about the majority. The majority of them just don't, don't even have an idea what they're, what they're talking about, right? They've just read the book and they want to sell you something, so they're going to start doing all kind of crap. I'm telling you about those who more or less have ideas of what they're doing, more or less knowledgeable. They do that. They've made that mistake. And you would see that mistake many places. And it's incorrect. They will not get the results. They're fixing the charts after the fact. Most of them fix the charts after the fact because they have no idea. That is not what the chart is doing. And if you label that fiber, you're wrong. As a matter of fact, one of the amazing things that happens to most traders who join my room is when they start to look at how we look at the charts. And when they start to see the structure the way we saw it. And then they start to see all the mistakes they were making before they joined. Because you start to see that what you were doing before fixing the charts is not what the chart is doing. And that makes the huge difference, right? Now, what is the whole wave theory? And let me spend two more minutes. I think this is going to be important for every single one of you. So let me just spend two more minutes in this. And this one you should remember. I was just looking at a drawing, and um, a, an artist drawing and on Facebook. I, it's, I should have kept that drawing for you. So he started by drawing some lines like this. Just, I'm just giving you an idea. That's what he started. That's what the painting started with. Anybody wants to tell me what he's trying to draw at that stage? Don't even try to guess. You will never. And then he adds some more like this and some more like this and two more dots like this. I actually remember what he did because I wanted to. Exactly. And by now you're having an idea that he's trying to make a face. Can you tell me if it's a, a man or a lady? You see, you see the whole concept, right? Is that you cannot tell what he's doing unless there is enough information in it for you to tell what he's doing. It's the same thing with the wave theory. There are variations of how the corrective, you're going to have an impulse or a move. Let's not say impulse for now. Let's just say you have a move, right? Any move at any point in the chart. And that move will start to correct itself if that is an impulsive move. If that is an impulsive move that is not ending a bigger corrective structure, it will start to correct itself. It will start to do this. Here is the problem with most traders in the world. Figuring out what, what is this? What the hell is that? That is what is the most important thing. What is that? Because if you can read what is this, and you understand the amount of variations of how that could develop into, and the amount of structures that you need to look at to figure out what type of patterns could form in there, you will be a successful trader. That is what we teach traders to do. Understand the corrective structures, all its variations, all its possibilities, knowing all of that, how then you will learn how to trade them. You will have strategies, how to deal with each part of them how to trade it, how to understand when it's about to end or when one part of it is about to end before it becomes more complex. We always show all my traders this chart, Tonkat. Every time you thought you knew that the correction is over, that the corrective structure is over, think again. You may have it wrong. That's a rule we have. I can't give you the rule, but I can tell you in basic what the rule means. It's not over until it's over. And we have rules to tell you when it's over, right? I can't give you that rule there, but I can tell you. This thing took how long? From here all the way to here. See how much how, how, how long it took? 938 days. That's just about three years, I think before that correction is over. Did that change the fact that that was a corrective structure? No, it didn't. I don't think any one of you can trade a corrective structure that will last for three years. So every time you thought you knew this thing for sure that it's over, you will find yourself in trouble. But the impulse was amazing when it's finished. See? Once it's finished, there's an amazing impulse coming out of that. Remember how I like to draw it? If you know this, you can get that on any time frame, on absolutely any time frame. That's where I, I start most of my webinar most of the time, showing you 
the basics of wave theory. That is the basics of it. You can find that on any time frame. So, why most of them get it wrong? Well, because they don't have a clue what they're doing. Most of them out there don't have a clue. I know I'll get a lot of attack for this. People are going to come on my charts and write crap, but the reality is most of them don't have a clue what they're doing. Most of them, especially if you're, if you're listening, here is a clue how you know when somebody is trying to sell you something. Right? If, if, you, see, if you see somebody using something in their name except their name, trying to tell you who they are by calling themselves something like that, you probably want to stay away from them. Right? You want to follow people who are authentic. Somebody who's using their real name. Because people who use their real name to stand by what they put out there are people who are genuine. That's the first thing. It's, forget about whether they're right or they're wrong. People who are genuine and people who are serious and people who are, who are, who are you know, real in this world, they will use their real name. This, there are so many fake things happening in internet and all of that. You want to at least have one thing you can be sure of, that that person exists, he's real, he's genuine, and he's not hiding under any fake name. <laughs> so you want to make sure that's like the starting point. When people are writing the name, the harmonic trader or the, the supporter trader or the wave trader or all of that, Stay far from them. It doesn't matter what they call themselves, right? They call themselves all kinds of stuff, guru and all kinds of things. Some like them call themselves pros. I, like, I, I enjoy the part where some traders try to call themselves pros. Sure, you show sure you're a pro. And here's, here's one of the key you should learn if you're going to buy any course. Ask, ask the guy this. Ask this question because traders ask me this question, right? No, I'm not the ProWave Trader. I'm Anil Mangal. If you don't see ProWave Traders, is, is just the paid name of the page, right? You can find my name. You can Google me. You can see my real picture. You can meet me, right? So that's real. That's not, that's not fake. So let get that one clear. Even if you go on that page, you will see Anil Mangal there on that page. <laughs> my real hair color is white, yes. So let's go. If you, if you ask somebody, can you make me a pro, or if they tell you they will make you a pro when you finish the course, run away from them. I get that question many times from traders. Will I be successful when I finish your course? Will I be a professional trader? My answer is always, I don't know. I'm not a magician, and I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know your faith. I don't know your ability to learn. I don't know your ability to implement simple instructions. I don't know anything about you, so I cannot promise you that you are going to be a successful trader. What I can promise you is we will try our best to teach you to be successful. We will give you all the knowledge, all the support, all the practice you need to be successful. Will you be successful? I wish I knew that. I wish I knew whether you will be successful. Can you guys avoid using people's um, thing on our, on our thing? That's not good. That's unethical. When I say things, I am not saying to any particular trader, right? So we probably, we, we're discussing the concept of using anything else beside your name and your name, right? So if you're using it as, as, a, as a part of it, that's a whole different story. Let's not get personal. It's not about personal, any one person, right? So let's not get there. We're, we're talking about the concept. I'm telling you what to avoid if you're going to buy a course. So you're looking for something genuine. Avoid people who actually, who actually promise you to make you pro traders. You should avoid that. You don't have to post people who promise that. You should know that for yourself. Just learn it for yourself. Anybody who says you're going to buy their course and they promise you they're going to make you a pro and you'll be successful and you'll be the millionaire and you'll be having that swimming pool they show you and you'll be having that house and you'll be having that that wonderful model as a wife, you got to run far. Because they're, they're promising you something they can never, ever make happen. Right? The mansion there too, right? And the swimming pool and the fancy everything else, right? I cannot promise that because I don't know. You guys may want to avoid using people's name. We're going to get ourselves in trouble. Don't use anybody's name in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat, please. Let's take the concepts. 
the concept of any one of them promising you that. Don't go there. Because they cannot promise you things that are impossible. They don't know if they can do it. Now, you might be the best trader in the world. You might take any course and become the best trader in the world. But you know what? No guru, no trader, no teacher, no professional, no, no professor, no anybody can tell you that will happen. You ever, you ever think you're going to Harvard and you're just good and they tell you, I mean, don't worry, we're going to make you the best lawyer in the world? They don't even know if you're going to finish the university because that's, that's not a guarantee they can give you. Right? A lot of people have wasted money on a lot of other different concepts. Uh, here. I got people who are taking my course who have already finished three or four courses before. And they've just wasted their money because they trusted somebody who sell them a package of fancy things. Right? Don't, don't, I, I never promise any one of my traders. None of them can say I promise them they will be a successful and super trader. I said, we will promise you to teach you. We will promise you to make you successful. We will try our best and we will give you our all. And we do that in the room. You call me and ask me and you will see the answer. Never. I can't. One guy wrote me, can I, how much money I'll make when you finish the course? I'm like, I have no idea. I don't even know if you will make money. I don't know you. I don't know if you are, you're capable of learning anything in the first place. How can I promise you that? Maybe you're one of those crazy persons. I'm not talking about anybody in part. Maybe you're one of those crazy persons who don't like to implement rules. Then you're not going to be successful in my course. Because you have to implement rules. That's the rule of it. That's how we teach you. Right? So promising people those things are fake. If, if they do that, run away from them. They have no clue. Let's go on with our webinar. We spent too many times in that. Too long on that. Let's go. Okay, guys, let's start. We're going to start right now. I think so. we have had so many good forecasts this week that worked well, so I'm not going to go into details. Dollar index, still in correction. Nothing new, right? We expect this to correct. And is there a chance it's going to go up more or is it going to break? Let's look at it in the lower time frame, four hours. Right now, as you see in the four hours, there is a chance for both things to happen right now. We have a move up. We got a move down. Right now, this could be a correction for one more down. Right? So we will start to look for sell setups here. If it is going to go up more and it could go up more, wait for flags and buy. Wait for flags and buy. Wait for flags and buy. But there is a chance that this could come down. I hope all of you see that possibility. So you watch for trades to the downside. Euro, same here. There is a chance. We will have to look at this two ways. Either this is the correction and we are going down. That means if you get a flag here in a 60 minute sell, you get another flag sell, you get another flag sell. But be aware that this structure here could stop right here, which means you might get your first sell, take profit and watch it reverse. If it starts to reverse, you're gonna be do good in making some money in the upside because you're going to see the impulse, you're going to see the flag, and then you're going to go, right? So be careful. No, it's not a hop, uh, it's not a head and shoulders. That's not what head and shoulder concept is, and that's not how it looks like. I don't think it's a head and shoulders. Pong, Pong has the best setup for an upside. It's actually showing us that this is possible. You've got a very sharp move. You're getting some slow moves coming down, and they're showing us a possibility of going one more up before they come down making a three-wave corrective structure within that move down, right? Now, remember, just, just let me make a, let me take a second to make a note here. Structures, corrective structures have many variables. When I put a flag, that, when I put a line saying that they will likely go break the stop before they come down, that doesn't have to happen because if they're going to make a contracting flat, as some of you know we call it, the C wave could be short. It could stop short here and then they could start to go down. So if you buy here, if you get a buy setup in the first place and you buy it, just be aware of that, that it might not get to the 270, although 90% of the time we expect them to go there. So do we have a buy setup in the one hour? No, we don't have it yet, but it looks like they're going to make a flag here. And if they make a flag here, this would be a perfect buy setup. So you will probably have watch Monday morning making a flag. And if they do, we get a buy setup. If this drops like that, you're not supposed to sell it. You don't have a sell setup here. So if you try to sell it there and it drop there, you're lucky. You will not get lucky in the Forex market pretty often. Luck is not a strategy. So if they drop here, what you're going to do is you're going to wait to see if they make a flag. And if they make a flag, that will be your sell. 
this was a cell setup, that was a cell setup, this was a cell setup, this was a cell setup. This is not a cell setup. Actually, I think they're making a buy setup. I think all of you understand my concept by now if you're here, if you're following me for a long while, right? You understand concepts and basics. At least these are the basic concepts, right? So you don't have a cell setup, look for a buy setup. Great, let's go. Aussie. Aussie, if you look at the, the chart this way, you can see pretty much that, yes, there is a possibility. This was a good sell and we took that sell and we took this sell and we made money. There is a chance they can drop one more. And there's a chance they can drop one more and drop one more. Every time you get a flag, sell it. After, after this next drop, start taking profit because after that, there is a good chance you make one, two, three, and you go back for one high before you come down. So Great British Prong has a good chance of going one more. Aussie has a good chance of going one more. So if you're going to trade these two, the Pong, I would only look for upside unless proven otherwise. The Aussie, I'll, I am in the cell and I'll be careful in it. I am in the Aussie cell already. I'll be careful to get out and look for possible buy setups if it starts to change. I think they can do that. You can expect this to drop one more. And if, it, if it's not very aggressive, there's a good chance you can do this and start to see upside. Right? So just be aware of that. Those two. New Zealand. Perfect. If you were following, we were expecting a, a move down like this, right? We thought this will give us one, two, and they might go back there, right? So this was one. We were expecting two and then probably up. So if you took that sell, you, some of my traders managed to get that. If you took that sell during the news event, well, it wasn't a news event, but just an Asian session, you're lucky. If you took that sell there, you were lucky. If you didn't, well, you're no longer in luck. You have to wait. Right, so come back to what is happening in the bigger picture. Remember, I said this could repeat what the cat was doing in the bigger picture, right? Remember, the cat did this to us. The cat has a very similar structure a very long, drawn out A wave, a B, a C, sharp C wave, very short, and then starts to drop. This is breaking out, and that would confirm with a sideways move, which means a correction. And if that happens, you're going for this trade. There's a good chance it's going to make a big one. Let me bring up the cat for comparison. Right? Remember this CAD one, a long drawn out A wave, a B wave, a sharp C wave. Once they broke that trend line there, they made a, con actually the consolidation was just inside of the trend line. If you remember this, the consolidation of this was just on the trend, right? You see they consolidated there and then they drop that consolidation and then they drop. Well, you look for that consolidation in the New Zealand now. Once the New Zealand gave you that consolidation, you want to be in that cell because it's gonna drop, they're very, very similar. Watch this structure and watch this structure, see? This is a weekly structure, this is a daily structure. The difference is the time frame. The CAD is a daily structure, this is mostly based on the daily chart, right? A short move here, a very nice consolidation and a drop. I think CAD is gonna go up more, we'll come to that. That is why New Zealand is gonna fall. New Zealand has a weekly, this is a huge, huge, huge impulse down. This is a very, very big correction. And I could see that if you get this trade here and this thing starts to drop, it could come to retest that low and go much lower. Like the CAD did, went much lower. So you don't want to miss on this trade. Now, what, why would this go down if Aussie is going down? Well, it's not going to go down if Aussie goes up. What it's likely going to do is it's going to correct if Aussie goes up. So if Aussie, Pong, and Euro go up, New Zealand will start to make corrections like this. It will be corrections, but it will be corrections to the upside before they drop. Right? So, yes, we're still expecting the fifth wave and Aussie upside, but we're still in the consolidation. I don't think this upside would be the start of the fifth wave. This upside is still in a corrective phase. Right? So, if you look back at the daily chart, it's still in the corrective phase. So, watch this here. Swiss. Swiss is consolidating at the top. So, like we said, it's either going to drop for one more. It could be anybody's call. Drop for one more, or they're going to break out of this structure and go back to test the top. Well, we are here now, and there's a chance you can get one more down before they go. So let me get into that structure and show you guys. Put it in the one hour. And on the one hour, this is what we have. We could probably get this, get that, and we might come back here before they go. If they do that, this is a nice cell setup. So you probably want to take this cell setup. Remember, we said Aussie, New Zealand, Pong could probably, and, and Euro could probably go up. So you may want to watch for this cell set up here. If this happens, that's a nice trade. And then look for upside. 
This might just finish this expanding flat here. Now, when it breaks and it comes to this level, put it to break even because if they start going up back from there, you buy from the break of the top. All right? So just wait. Keep your questions for the end because I, I, can't, I can't watch it both screens at the same time. The chat is in another screen. I can see you guys typing, but keep it to the end. So yen, very similar structure. Yen has made a correction. I think yen might most likely just made a make a correction here and look for more upside. I don't see yen coming down very much. Yen is probably going up more. So if you get a flag on the yen there, buy. If yen falls, we can allow it to fall. If it falls, let's say something happened and they drop like this, look for buy setups. Don't look for sell setup. You might not get the sell. But if you do, it's not going to be a good risk to reward trade. So we're looking for buy setups on the end. The downside on the Swiss that I show you in that trade would be very short term, even if it happens. It's going to be a short drop here and right back up. All right? So long term, we're looking for Swiss up. We're looking for yen up. CAD. Remember, we were looking for this to go down. This made one, we said one cannot be all the correction. It made two and we said, okay, watch this here. You'll probably come break the low and then go. Well, remember I told you about the contracting flats where they don't break the low. This was one where they don't break the low and we traded during the news and some of my traders got some huge gaps, so we closed the trade. They closed it for profit, but because of the huge gaps we got when we traded, we actually closed it. And I think we got, 60 pips or I don't know how much, but huge gaps. So I told him close the trade because we're not keeping a trade with so much gap in it. So what you're going to do now is wait for, you're correcting against the bigger trend, right? This is the bigger trend. You're correcting against that. So if you get a flag here, a flag, a correction, buy a flag, a correction, buy a flag, a correction, but at some point you're going to start to come back down. I don't think this is the start of a bigger upside. But if it is, good for you. You will be on the right side of the trade if you're buying. So wait for that setup. Wait for pullback. Wait for corrective structures. Wait for flags. And then buy. don't buy it right now. Right? Wait for that. If you get that, then you buy. What are the possibilities? I really don't want to go into the detail of this. But there is still a possibility for this to come back here and then go making this piece of B wave structure within as an A, a B, and a C. But that's a complex pattern and we don't want to go there as yet. If that happens, you're just not going to be getting the trade to the upside. Something, if you see it, you can look for sell. But I would not go in, if I go into that, that would be a long time to explain to you how to get the sell in that setup. That is possible. It's rare, but it's possible. We'll go with a contracting flat for upside. So if you get a flag by, if they start to drop, just ignore it. XAG, it will still go back up. It's just a matter of whether they'll make a more complex pattern in the middle. Good. Remember I said, you don't want to buy this as yet. Because this cannot be all the correction. Well, they are making more corrections here. And if they do this, you can start to look for buy setups. Right? So if you see this setup here now, you can start to look for buy setups on silver. I think we will get them. Gold will be very similar. Let's put the gold in the daily. Somebody's asking for deeper. You're still in the uptrend, but the uptrend looks very corrective. This trend by itself looks corrective. So if the bigger picture is going to be for, for the downside, if the big, bigger picture is going to be for the downside, I'll look at it weekly for you just now. If you look at this structure, right, this is an ABC, so this one will probably go up some more. I will not be surprised if this one goes up at least one more impulse up, even if they're going to come down. I could see them even making one here before they come down, even if they're going to come down. So the upside in the silver is more is a higher probability for, for you to get. On the goal, on the other hand, you're in this structure. And this structure could behave two ways. They could crawl down here and go back up there and do this and do this and do that and do this and then come down, breaking the top. That's an option. All of you will know what that would be, right? A possible AB squeeze structure. Right? You got an A, you got a B, and you're looking for a squeeze. We're not looking at it that way as yet. We're still looking at this as an A, a B, and a possible C before they go back within a bigger ABC structure, which means we would look at this as a possible A, B, C, right? Now, that doesn't mean this cannot change the way it's trading, right? When they do like this, two things we expect. Either it's a B wave or it's making a squeeze. Which is it doing? We don't know. You see, you don't have to know. You know what you know is the possibilities. And then you said, if it does this, this is how I'm going to trade it. 
if it does the second possibility, this is what I would do. Right? We know that there are two very strong possibilities now because you will you, you don't have to know what is gonna either they're gonna make a C wave and go back up. We'll be prepared to trade this. We have strategies and we're prepared to do that. We will understand when that is possible. Or either it's making an AB squeeze. And if it's making an AB squeeze, don't worry, we'll be ready for buys as well. So what do we do at this moment going into four hour? Like I said, you shouldn't be buying it when that starts to go up as yet. And you shouldn't be selling it when they start to go down. If you take those as a short-term trade, stick profit. So what you have here is one, two. That's not a buy or a sell setup. That's nothing. If they go back, make three, and then start to fall, you've got a sell setup. Take the sell setup at least to this level. And then we will see if they break the structure or if they bounce. See? So as it's developing on a daily basis, we analyze it and we decide, well, which part, what is the next move? What is the next, what should we do with this trade? If we're in the trade, how do we manage it? And that is trading. That is what you've got to do, right? So one webinar a week is definitely not enough for you guys, but it's what you have right now. The only the traders in my group get it every day. So what we're gonna do, do you have a buy setup? No. For you to get a buy setup, it's going to take at least 48 hours before it can create a buy setup for you. So possible sell setup, but no buy setup. So wait. This has a perfect sell setup. And this is the one I think you should focus on. I think all of you remember when we said they'll break the top and they'll drop, and they did. And I said, wait for the consolidation before you sell it. Well, it's actually consolidating for you now. This would be the trade of the week. If this thing spikes up, ignore it. If this goes up, let's for whatever reason, I don't know, it just didn't spike like that, ignore it. Look for a sell setup. The sell would be a very high probability trade and a really good trade. It might drop, you might get one more drop here. And then they may go for a bigger correction like they did here and then start to go down again. If you're lucky, and you may be lucky, you never know how lucky you are, it might just drop straight to the bottom. We think Aussie has a possible move up. Euro has an up move, but not so strong as the Aussie. Euro could still go down some more, and that means you might get a very sharp move rather than a small move down. So pay attention to this one, because this one is important. The trend line has little value. The trend line is there for a different purpose. It's just to tell us the pattern. It has nothing to do with whether it's gonna break it or don't break it, I don't care, I'll be selling. If they break this structure here, I'm selling. Can they go up a little more? I can see them crawling up. I'm not interested in the buy, I'm interested in the sell. If I get the sell setup, I take it. If they spike up, that's it, I'm not in the trade. Because that setup is not giving me a buy setup. You know, it's not giving me a reason to buy it. You're in New Zealand. This did what we expect, but it didn't do it full as we expected to do. They broke, they went up, they broke the top here. We didn't expect them to break it up. We thought they'll come back from here. We thought we were going to get a regular flat. They'll come to this level and go. Instead, they give us a running flat. So you got one and you got three. And you're breaking the top. Now, this is a pattern that is known. It's pretty hard to trade because you will hard to predict that whether this move will break the bottom or not. Very often you get expanding flat, so we're always looking. And then with the sharp move up, you probably wouldn't get it, right? It's too sharp. If they had made a very nice flag in the middle, I think they had one, but I, I don't know very many traders were there to catch it. But if you were following it and you got that flag, you, you, flag, you get the buy. Right? I think that was a news event. So if you didn't, then don't worry. Wait for pullback. They always do. To confirm any buy, and then you buy. That will confirm your next move to the upside. And you probably would want to take this buy because it does have potential to go more up. If this is only correction, then that's a huge size correction. They're gonna go very much up. So keep your eyes on that. Euro yen, Euro yen breakout is not going up very aggressive. And if, if it continues to go up, it will not go up very aggressive, right? They will break the top maybe slightly. You, if you get a pullback and you get a flag to buy, buy it once they break the top, you're being careful. Because I feel that somewhere in here they're making an ending diagonal structure. 
and then we're going to get one more correction, one more up, and then drop. If they don't break that up and they start going down, you look for that cell setup. You want it. The cell setup in this, you want it because there's a very big move to the downside. So if this goes one more up and come back here and do one more up, we're going to have something like this. So it within this range, yes, they can go some more up. Making some kind of an ending diagonal structure at the top there before they drop. That's what we are expecting if they break the top. We'll expect them to make some kind of an ending diagonal structure and drop because you're still going to come back down. So go back on the four hour. If you get a buy setup, take the trade. It's short term. You're getting some kind of a flag or a corrective structure here. That would be a good buy because it's short term. If they don't break that top, this is very significant, and they drop sharp here and make a flag, you don't want to miss that sell. Allow it to drop first and then make it. You don't want to miss the sell. Right? So let's go. Can you guys hold your comment for later? I don't know why everybody's worrying so much about it. Just wait a little. We'll deal with that. We have 255 people, so we have a lot more than I expected. So I don't think anybody missed the date. Let's go. Right. We normally get about 350. 100 people have been coming on the Sunday webinar. But I guess they watch it on Monday. So we may still consider continuing on Sunday. Eurochief, we still have next week's Sunday. Eurochief, you're getting a sell setup, actually. You have an impulse and you're getting a correction here. So you can look for this trade down. And I think they will come to about this level. So that might be a good trade. Right? At this level, they'll talk to you. They'll either break or they'll bounce. But you will get, you will get enough pips to, to be happy about. It's a good risk to reward trade. Right? Let's go. Eurocad. Eurocad broke up. It's still going well. See that? They broke up based on this structure. We expected that. We looked at this structure and we said, this looks like it's going to go one more up. Actually, that was a buy setup you saw there. Let me take that out. So that was a buy setup we got there. I think they can go a little more. And then we will watch this structure and we will watch this structure here. Chances are we could get one more down. Chances are they could break. Right? Which they're going to do, I have no clue. I rarely tra trade this chart in the first place. So if you're one of the people who trade this, wait for a pullback. If they give you, and they will probably give you a pullback here, this would give you a nice trade to this level, put it to break even and watch if they break. Because if they break, you will be in an amazing trade to the upside. If that breaks, you have a trade that would look like this. Back to the top of this. Let me see if I can squeeze this, yes. If that break, you will have a trade that will bring you back to the top here. So you want to take that trade if you trade this pair because that could be an amazing trade. They could really take off. See that? When they break, they could take off. So if they break there, they'll take off. If they drop, they'll drop one more to this level. See that? Could be. So watch this trade here. If they come down, they'll give you one more there and then they'll take off to the top. So let's see which one they do. The upside is an amazing trade. The downside is not a bad trade. Either could happen right now. Europan, well, I think my views, and this is pretty clear, and it has been clear, crystal clear all along. I only sell the Europan. I do not buy the Europan, and I don't think you should buy it. Right? The Europan has a very, very big trade to the downside. And I'm, a, I'm intent, intending and catching all of this. I hope, remember again, I hope they break the low. Sometimes they do make running flat. They might come to this level and start to go. But I think I'll get enough pips there to make a decision. I already have a lot of profit in it, and I'll get more profit by it because I sold from the top. So I'll get more profit by the time they get there to make it. I could make a decision right now. I don't have to worry, right? So what is this doing right now? If this is the correction, we think that it is. This will be some kind of a contracting flat and then we'll be aiming for downside. So if you get a flag here, sell. If you get a flag, sell. If you get a flag, sell. Anywhere you get a flag, sell it. Don't buy it. It's always dangerous to buy against the bigger trend because you're going to get yourself in trouble. 
So look for a sell setup here. Go in the one hour, wait for a big flag, nice correction to come on. They make they always make very nice when those short term trades. You see how wonderful they were. They'll make one here like this, nice, and then drop. So wait for it. Right? That would be a good one. Pong Oz. We'll come to that. Pong Oz, I think you can get some more upside in the Pong Oz. Remember the bigger daily structure we showed you? There's a possibility they can come here. I, 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 we were rethinking it whether they'll get there. So, but it started, it made it a sharp move up and looks like they're gonna go there, right? We got one, two, three, we got one, we got two, we got three, and then this sharp move come, right? So if they go out here and they make a flag, this will take a long time. I don't think you're gonna get a trade on this. This may take a whole week in correction here. And if this breaks out, that would be a good trade. Right, if that breaks out, that would be a very good trade. So if they make that correction this week before and they break out before the end of the week, don't miss the trade. If it drops to the low again, you don't have a sell set up there. Right? Pang New Zealand, this was a definite up one. This one we forecast, we, we looked at it, we did everything we can. We told you what a possibility, and this turned out to be a very good trade, right? We told there's only one direction you want to look at this. That is the upside, right? This 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 wasn't a two-way. Two ways one. This was they're making a correction for more upside. That was pretty clear, right? So they're gonna break this top and they are breaking it. And now they will talk to us. Now they will tell us what is going to happen next when they break that up. So there's probably some more upside. Any pullback you get, you can buy. Well, pullback means you'll look for a correction like this and then you'll buy some kind of a corrective structure, right? One second. Give me a second, please, guys. <laughs> Okay, guys, sorry about that. I just get this coughing still. It happens every now and then. <clears throat> uh, this the, the flu is gone, but they are, still there's some after things. Sorry about that. I thought I muted. I, had, I realized I, I pressed the mute, but it didn't activate immediately. So, all right. <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you. Let's go. Let's move on. Pong Chief. We're still looking for downside. Nothing has changed in the Pong Chief, right? Right? Nothing has changed in the Pong Chief. So let's go. So watch this. We've got a one, two, three up. Remember when this started to come down, we said we don't like it. We think you're going to get one more up. Well, you may get a correction. You may get one more up and then look for that trade. Don't try to buy the punk chief. If you buy and they do this, that will be your luck. That will not be the analysis in the chart. Because likely we can see them do something like this and then down. I'm not interested in the buy. I'm interested in the sell. So my first attempt at sell, I close for profit, and I'm looking for a second attempt at the sell. I'm still looking for this trade. See this here? Everybody see that? And then look what happened. This is the trade you want. If this happens, you should take the trade. If they do that, I'm not interested. Right? So you've got to move up, you've got a correction, you've got to move up, look for the sell setup. That's it, that's all, nothing else. It's not complicated, it's something we forecast way back, right? I've shown you that many times. This is a huge correction. Don't miss this trade, don't miss this trade. Don't miss that trade, don't miss this trade. Right? So don't come back here and when this happened a week or two from now, you say, hey, I don't know what happened. I was trying to look for it, but I missed it. I'm warning you now not to miss it, right? Because there's a 95% chance that is going to happen. And by the end of the week, this week, that might be 99% if it does what we expect it to do. Actually, we did this analysis in our trading room way down to reading everything in here, and we knew this was going to happen. We're looking for one, two, three maybe four and five, and then we'll look for that trade now. So can it get a little more complicated than that? Possible, but it will still be a corrective structure and it will still be a sell setup. 
Don't miss it. Pang Yen, it's getting a little complicated too, but I still think it will be a sell setup. You got a one, two, three, you got a one, two, three, and they're going up. They might make a two. If they give you this, take the three and then look for a sell setup. If they do this, we look for a sell setup. I still think it's giving a sell setup because it's just getting a little more complicated. I don't see a buy there as yet, but you, you may get a buy this weekend that they may make a correction here. If they give you something like that, you'll get a buy setup. The buy might be a good impulse, so you may want to take it, get it, get in and get out, right? Right? Get in and get out. So look for those two trades. Punkat. Uh, you forget to mention the, 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 the Euro Punk too. They're not supposed to miss that because that one we were supposed to be in since a long time back, right? I'm still in it. You're supposed to be in it. I know a lot of you don't have the patience to stay that long in the trade, right? So what is the Punk Cat doing? Punk Cat is anybody's guess right now because it, th this, 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 is a, this is the move we have and that doesn't tell us enough. There isn't enough information to say whether they're going to drop or whether they're going to go up. So we will wait and see what they do, and then we'll make a decision where to that. You can just don't trade it. There are many other good trades, right? Aussie, New Zealand, this one, it, it was a surprise that it goes so fast so far, but it's still within the structure we want, which is the B wave, and I am not trading it in the daily. Right? It's still within that, that, that structure. We have got this impulse. We have got this one, two, three, and this is still doing some crazy stuff here, as we call it, making a B wave, and we, we might still get this. So if they start breaking this structure here to the downside, I'll be interested in the sell, potentially before the next buy, right? I don't think this is the impulse up. We were looking for that impulse up from here. We bought it from here and then we got taken out and then we bought it from here and then we got taken out and then we bought it from here. And I, I, didn't, I didn't buy that anymore. And then most, some of my traders are still in it. So I don't think this is going to be an impulse here. But if it does change structure to look like that, which means a very complicated start and then goes, we will look at it, right? If not, if not, we're just going to ignore this. Ignore this for a while until we figure out what this B wave structure looks like. For now, I think it's a B wave structure because it is very, very corrective. No, but we changed that a long time back because we don't think this is the B wave. This is the C wave. C waves don't look like that. They look very much like this. It's supposed to go like this. We, we thought this is the one that's going to go. And then we said this one is going to go. But once they made this, we changed that to a more complex corrective structure. Right? Because we can see that it's looking more co complex right now. They haven't broken the top, and that's very good for us. Aussie Cat? Aussie Cat is making correction. You may get some downside here, but first it's going to go up a little. Right? They're breaking, breaking this structure, but I don't think it's breaking the structure for upside. See? I don't think they're break. Let me take this off so you can see. I think that this, this is making some kind of a one, two, three wave structure here. And then you might say, so they will break here, but then they'll start to fall. So that breakout should not be a buy for you, right? Just breaking the structure doesn't mean anything. I think they're making some kind of a flat there for downside. Aussie yen. I want to show you the long term picture in Aussie yen so that you'll have an idea what to look for. This is what Aussie yen looks like in the long term, right? You've got to move down, you've got to move up, you've got to move down, and they're starting to go up. But this move is not going up very aggressive. So at some point, this move might make one more down, right? One more down. We never broke that top. So we might very likely go break the low before we go back up. So if you look at Aussie from that point of view and you go into daily, you can see that the daily picture also made like one, two, three, one, two, three, and they're actually in consolidation here. I can see them dropping back. I can see them going one more, but eventually if they break this stop, the bigger picture would be to the downside. So for the four hour and the one hour trade, if you get corrections here and you're getting corrections here in the one hour and they break the top, you buy, take profit. They correct again, they break the top, buy, take profit. They correct and they break the top, buy, take profit. Because once they break this top, they can start to fall. You would look for sell setups. Sell setups would be the thing you want to look for there. Aussie Chief, I think this one also is going to give you that very similar. They may start to make something like this, but eventually you're going to get one more downside. Right? So if you notice when this one made that, they went up, not very fast. It doesn't move very aggressive. 
So the drop is going to be very slow with a lot of pullback inside. You just got to be careful. Swiss yen, stay out of this. It's a downside, but not a good trade. New Zealand yen, this was a good, this was a good downside. If you take the trade, if you haven't, then they're consolidating here for you. And that means you're going to get one more drop. Right? Wait for the consolidation, take the drop. New Zealand CAD, same here. New Zealand CAD, you want to be careful of though. Because if you look at this pattern, this could go back up. Right? So if you get a buy setup here and you need to wait for that buy setup because we don't have it right now, you might be getting it now and then you might be getting it right here if they consolidate here and then decide to go back, this would be a good buy setup. Right? So the New Zealand CAD could give you that trade there. New Zealand Swiss, you're definitely looking for some kind of a sell after this consolidation here. They're consolidating and they'll probably drop more. Yes. So wait for the consolidation to over. I think there might be more consolidation and look for another drop. Right. Cadian, stay out of it. Cat Swiss, keep this one for cell setups. This was the flag that we broke, right? Let me just show you the whole structure so you can figure it out. You got one, you got two, you got three. You got one, you got two, you got three. So you're making one still. I think still think we're in one. They will come here, they may make that, and then they may drop. So if you're going to get a cell set up here, be aware that it might not be long term, which means if this drop here and make a flag, then you sell. But be careful that they can do that. They can make that big correction there, right? They can make this big correction in the middle. See that big correction there? Which means a big correction here before they drop. So you're going to get one, two, three. Watch it. It's a good trade too. Short term, it might be a good trade. Copper downside, look for more sell setups. Copper will give you more sell setup. On the one hour, you want to look for any nice flag it gives you and sell. If they go back up, that would be a perfect sell setup. If they go here and they come down, you will have the perfect sell setup, right? So US oil, it's breaking the downside, but it's not going, right? It, it broke the downside, it gave you a flag, it broke. If anything, you got to break even try it. It's making some consolidation in here. And if they make bigger consolidation in here, they're going to go up, right? Let me just take this one to show you that. Take off this to show you. So what you're probably getting here is a bigger consolidation. Put it in a four hour. So every time you get a big consolidation in the direction of this would have been a, this one, this that would be the bigger consolidation. This is a big consolidation in here and you're getting one here. So eventually this should go out there one more, right? So how far is gonna go once they break that up? you can start to see them come, coming back to the trend line. So I would not go with the upside for a long-term trade, but a short-term trade, very short-term trade you can take, and then watch for it to do that. Don't be surprised if they don't even break the top, right? They might or might not break that top. So that's a short-term trade to the upside, but they will do it. So you can take the trade, just get it to break even. Same here, this one broke the low here, but it's not going, so they'll start to make this one. And that didn't give you a trade setup because it barely break the low. If you're looking at a very low time frame and you got a trade setup, where they can break this stop and then come back or they can take off. Buy it and put it to break even. So in any case, if you're wrong about it, you get break even trades like this. Let's say you've sold this and put it to break even. Let's say you sold that and you should have probably sold that, put that to break even. All you get is a break even trade. Let them give you the direction they're going now. And if they break out, buy it, put it to break even, they reverse and they can reverse in the higher time frame. Right, you're still in the consolidation. So it goes back, it goes back one more up, come down. You would look for the sell setup. Oh man, what's wrong with this? Yes. You do this, come down back, give you a break even trade, and goes there, you look for a sell setup somewhere at the bottom here. Doing that. If that's too complicated, stay out of it. Natural gas. Stay out of this. It's getting complicated, right? Which means this would either crawl its way down here 
or they're going to break out, make a high, and then come back. Right? It's just making a more complex structure. Which one will it be? Stay out of it. You don't know. Right? A pin bar to buy, right? <laughs> You're funny. Good. S&P 500, they dropped very nicely, made a big drop. And then if you were in the trade, you got a break even. I would not have taken out the trade. If I was in that cell, I would put it the break even and keep it. So although you went quite a lot, I would have put that to break even and keep it, which means this turned out to be a break even trade. It breaking the top, look for cell setups, right? Remember, let me just show you why you want to look for, people, may, people look at this and say, what is he talking about? It's going up. Look for cell setups. If you get every cell setup you get, you take, and you get a break-even trade. Let's say you get five cell setups, and they're all correction, and you get five break-even trade, and the sixth one fall, it will pay off, because this thing is so high that the higher probability of a bigger trade to any direction, the higher probability of this doing that or doing this. Which one has a higher probability? Let's put it very simple. This is how you can, this is just common sense. This thing has been moving up from here like forever. What remains the higher probability trade? A drop or another spike up? Common sense. That's just common sense. So try to take all the style setups you get, even if you get them at break even the first three, four. Because you're going to get lucky in the fifth one. And by lucky, I mean you better be in the trade to be lucky. You just can't sit out there and sit in your hand and expect to catch that big drop if it happens. Unless you take the trade on the breakout when you get it. Right? So spike the moon, not going to happen. People are already, they're already fair in the market going around that it has moved too much. It has gone too much. Right? So once that fear starts to step in, people will take their risk and say, hey, you know what, I think I should jump out of this now. Right? The people who are pushing this so fast now are you know, trying to catch the last bit before they jump out. So same here. We broke the top. And once we broke the top, we start saying, OK, what to do? So if you sold it and you got a break-even trade, look for another sell setup. There isn't a sell setup here as yet. I still think they can go some more. I still think they might. Just push one more up before they come down. But they will come down. Nifty has probably one more up. Nifty made an expanding flat, and we think Nifty could correct and give you one more up. Watch the 270. And then look for very soon a downside. You can buy Nifty. Actually, this is the only one you can buy because this hasn't moved very far from the top, and it could still go. So if you get a buy setup, take that one. Let's see what else. For those who really trade the, the cryptocurrencies, we look at a few of them very fast. Bitcoin, it came down, made a flag. Short term, don't buy it. Don't buy it when it's at the top. If I was trading this, and this is how I would trade, this is just my view. If I were trading it, and I look at a structure like this, I'd, I would not try to buy it here. I'll wait for it to come back here. Let it come back here and give you a fair chance to buy if you want. Right? <laughs> people say it's still going to 20,000. Keep dreaming. <laughs> the people who say so, they're the people who will be the first to jump out of it when they get enough money, right? They'll push it one more, push it one more, and then jump out of it and leave you there. Right? So don't use the structure to trade it. That's it. Let it come back. Let it come back. It will come back. Let it come back. You see, they made that hook there. They, they've done that here already. Look at this piece. Look at the similarities. You see, they made this thing here. They go one more up and then drop it. They made this here. They go one more up. What a chance they might do that. Right? The bigger it gets, the bigger the bubble gets. Yes. So you, you, you wait for it to come. If you buy at the low and you're wrong, you will get a chance to get out. So let's say you buy here. Let's, let's, let's put this. It drops here. And you buy here and you're wrong about it and it goes like this. Right? What are the chances it might do this before it drop? And you can get out for a little profit or break even before you get the next sell set up. So don't buy at the top because if it drops from the top, you have no chance of getting out. This one came down nicely. We expect it to come down. Remember I told you, watch this. 
Watch that line, they'll come down. I think this will come back within the 15 zone here. So if you're looking to buy it, buy once it gets into this 15, 10 zone here, buy. They will go back up and you'll make some profit. You can wait for them to come back, buy again. They'll go back up, you'll make some profit, right? So yeah, this might be the new silver. Just buy it every time it comes to the 15. And this is cheaper than silver because it's, hey, it's 15 cents. You know, silver is still $10 and $16. This is 15 cents, right? You know, how, how low can this go? Zero cent? Like, would you care if you invest $5,000 in it and you said, okay, let it be zero. I'm okay with that, right? It goes to zero and then it goes right back up, right? It moves from 15 to 30. You made 100% of your investment. You can take the profit and wait for it to come back, right? If it goes to $1, you're one lucky fella, right? So you can put a part of your investment in there as investment, not even trading. Consider that investment. <laughs> uh, you can't get, well, that's a whole difference. I'm not going there. Stefan, I'm not even going into that thing where brokers are going to pay you. I already said when things start to collapse, all those, those exchanges will disappear. They're not good. They, they're, you, you will see them disappearing when it's concerned to, 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 to these, these coins. That, that's your own risk. That's a risk I'm not going in. I'm only telling you about structure and investment. Whether you get back your money, not my business. Not going there. I'm not trading them. I don't care. I am not. I find better things to trade. So I'm okay. I'm not worried about that. This one, going down still. I was, I was expecting them to actually make a, a move up first. Make a move up first before. So they can still make that move up. Be careful. This can still make this move up and then come down. I don't know where that arrow gone. Right, they're coming down here, but I don't like this downside. Let me put this downside for you. I don't like this here. You can look for buy setups. As a matter of fact, you can start to look for buy setups from this one. Breakout, look for buys. And if, the, you, know, if you get buy setups in here, you can look for it, take it. They'll make that and then come down because this cannot keep, you know, keep going down like that forever. They have to go back up. So this is the only one that is showing you possible nice buy setups coming. Yeah, wait for them to pull back. Once you see that set up for the upside, the upside is not going to be a new high. The upside might be something like this, and then you're going to get down. I, 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 not only about Forex, it's about I know what, where my money will, who I can get my money from and what it's doing there. I don't, I don't have a clue who's going to pay me if things go wrong here. So this one is coming down already. They did not get way to the top here. They did not get way to that top. So we'll take off this option. This option is already not happening. We are left with two options now, right? Right now we're left with two options. This one here, come back here, go there and then come down again. Or it comes here and then go up. If they break out, you go. So watch it when it comes here, we'll see what they do. If you're not in the cell, you can look for cell setups, right? Wait for a setup, this is not a cell setup. I'll wait for them to make a flag here and then sell it to this level and put it to break even. Because if they break out, we'll get a C wave before we go back up, right? So keep your eyes on that. Let's go. What else? Some people wanted the, the Turkish lead. Let's run through some of these. I'll just go through whatever I have here. Let's look at Turkish lead. Then we'll look at the South Africa. Oh, you're getting a nice setup for a sell here. See that? By the way, this is a nice trade setup here. Short term, you're going to go up first, and then you're going to come down. You got a nice impulse. So you can get look for a short term buy and a one hour. It's a short-term buy, but it's a downside, a trade to the downside. So I would probably wait for it. Oh, sorry. This one is going to go up, and then you'll pull this trend, and then you'll see whether you get this to the downside. All right? So, by the way, nice one. I like it. I like structures like that. South African, man, just stay out of this. Let's see what it's doing in the four-hour. Oh, I can see what it's doing. Go ahead. Let me just take this here. We're looking at this as a matter of fact, and you can see I have the lines prepared for it. So right now, nobody's called. But you see when they did this, look at this piece here. See what they did? They drop and they pull back and they drop. So I'm expecting them to drop, pull back, drop, and then go back up. This structure needs to complete itself. If that keeps going up, it's gonna still drop. So you probably look for a sell set up there. On the Singaporean, if anybody's interested, I'll do this very fast and we'll call that a day. You may be looking for a cell setup also. Euro Egyptian pound. 
that, that, that's one we never try in Euro trip. If we continue like that, guys, we're going to go very far. Let's, let's call it a day there. Let me tell you, thank you for coming. It's more than an hour. I'll stop the recording for sure.